Why do we celebrate Christmas? We celebrate Christmas really is based on the two factors. Of course, the Old Testament leads towards Christmas with the promise of the Messiah. And all throughout the Old Testament, it comes to Christmas. The winter solstice uh, was, is, right around Christmas. I have heard that the date of Christmas was moved or invented to um, echo the celebration of the winter solstice. So we celebrate Christmas for two reasons now in the modern era. First is the world has come to mark that as the birth of Jesus Christ. And so the satsang of Christmas is worldwide. Yogananda celebrated Christmas uh, on the 25th. But also it's the um, celebration of the consciousness promised in the Old Testament that the consciousness of divine love as embodied by Christ and his life as the avatar is um, celebrated throughout the world. So the, the avatarship of Christ, the world mission of Christ, uh, is played out in the Christmas story to such an amazingly symbolic uh, and mystical portrait that uh, it's just the the book was called the greatest story ever told i'm sure that the hindus would say that the greatest story ever told was srimad bhagavatam and the story of krishna but for this life of christ the story of christmas the inner meaning of christmas the uh, difficulties that mary and joseph um, had in having the birth, having to travel for the census, uh, no room in the inn, all the difficulties that we see symbolically of Christ consciousness being born in us um, are covered in that story. And so we celebrate Christmas uh, because it's a, an opportunity culturally for the world to embrace truths which are eternal and that are rooted in the mystical birth of Christ consciousness within us. So it's the one of the few times that the world is celebrating something that the yogis and the disciples of uh, the mystic Christ can overlap with uh, Santa Claus and Christmas trees and uh, joy to the world and all those aspects. So it's a perfect uh, overlay of um, the world's habits, cultural habits, and the mystical truths of the inner anatomy of the soul, the Christ center, um, the love and purity of Christ, Christ consciousness, the um, Om, uh, as represented by Mother Mary, giving birth to the Christ consciousness. So it's really uh, a wonderful convergence of culture and the mystical practices of yoga and inner communion. Why do we give gifts on Christmas? The giving of gifts, as I always uh, heard it was because the three kings brought gifts. Uh, and of course, the Christ consciousness invites us to share what we've been given with our brothers and sisters. So it's uh, natural that there be gift giving. Um, I was raised in the Catholic tradition, so the three kings brought gifts to Mary and Joseph and the baby. And they were symbolic gifts, which indicated that the kings knew that the life of Christ would be played out on the world stage and that there would 
be suffering. One of the gifts was myrrh uh, for uh, preparing the body, the deceased body. But the three kings represent the tradition of the various religions. Uh, Kriyananda used to point out to us that the three kings coming to the birth of Christ represent an interfaith satsang. Uh, and this is the mystical tradition of the gifts. Of course, we want to share the gifts that we've been given with each other because we're brothers and sisters of the Divine Mother. We're the brothers and sisters of the Christ consciousness, in Christ consciousness. And so that loving energy is to be held. Uh, in Yogananda's tradition, the three kings are represented by Babaji, Lahiri, and Sri Teshwar. So the meaning of the gifts becomes even more uh, touching to our the Kriya Yoga path because we see that as the Master's coming with gifts to celebrate the launching of Christ's mission to the world uh, of true Christianity, divine love, world brotherhood, the unity of all religions, uh, sharing, giving, and the affirmation of the soul and Christ consciousness being the underlying reality of the whole world. And the challenge for us as true seekers of all paths is to see that behind and throughout all the traditions, all true religions and paths, uh, is the one realization of God's omnipresence and the goal of us to share the whole world, all the gifts, both material and emotional and spiritual, with each other so that we can move forward uh, towards uh, the realization that we are all part uh, and of the Christ consciousness, the mystical body of Christ, as it's referred to. We're all part of that body. We're all part of all that is. So the gifts definitely uh, move us in that spirit. It's wonderful that the tradition of the gifts persists. It's unfortunate that the materialism of the modern world makes that a major part of Christmas. Uh, the <laughs> business people and the corporations see Christmas as a, a shopping holiday, which <laughs> to, to uh, the spiritual world is, uh, you, you take what you're given. You, okay, the, we can tolerate that because it is giving of gifts. It's not selfish uh, but buying, but still. A little too much materialism and a little more spirituality would probably benefit all of us. Uh, and so that was a major component of, of Yogananda's celebration of Christmas and, of course, Kriyananda's and Ananda's is, um, as the saying goes, put the Christ back in Christmas, but put the Christ consciousness back in Christmas and just push with all the other churches and uh, sanghas and uh, all religious traditions to celebrate um, the true meaning of Christmas, uh, the giving of gifts, uh, especially divine love, world brotherhood, peace, joy, uh, and kindness, which uh, I think we need more of. What is Christ consciousness? What does Christ mean? The Christ means the anointed one, if you translate from the Greek, but the Christ is the consciousness which is the perfect reflection of the Father within creation. Jesus would say, uh, I and my Father are one, and of course he was speaking the truth. Most people of his time, and I'm afraid most people of our time, would not understand what he was talking about. But the Christ is the second part of the Trinity, 
both in uh, Hinduism and in Christianity, the father is in Hin the Sanskrit is sat, truth. Uh, the son is tat or that, uh, referring to the Christ consciousness. And the third part of the Trinity is Om or Holy Spirit. But the Christ consciousness is the consciousness which does pervade the universe, but is exemplified by the life of Jesus and all the avatars and all liberated beings in that they express not ego consciousness, not a separate, deluded, or divided consciousness, but the unitive consciousness of the Divine Father. And that is the Christ. Jesus, the man, had the Christ consciousness. So Christ was the title of Jesus. Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ. Uh, but he would share that with Krishna and Buddha and all the avatars, all the masters, and all, really, all enlightened beings uh, who, who are liberated would be able to be living Christ. Uh, the Christ consciousness is accessible to all human beings. We all have chakras, we all have the potential to reflect the Christ consciousness, live the Christ consciousness, realize the Christ consciousness. As Rajasi Janakananda said, there is no difference between one master and another master because they've attained the Christ consciousness. It's a very high state, and so it's not unusual that Jesus was not understood when he said, I and my Father are one. He was eventually tried <laughs> for uh, and crucified for expressing that truth, but uh, it is in fact the truth. And the goal of our human existence is to lift our center, our consciousness, our awareness to the Christ center and to expand our hearts with Christ's love so that we can see the world from the vantage point of Christ consciousness. In that, we would see or do see Christ consciousness in everyone uh, and pervading nature as Om, pervading all the animals the natural experiences, and seeing human behavior as ideally Christ consciousness, but the Christ consciousness filtered by the ego, by desires, by the veil of materialism, and yet still originating in Christ consciousness. We have a soul memory of the unitive consciousness of the Father, and we are striving, we are drawn, we are making efforts to attain that and regain that in our lives. Some people attempt by accumulating wealth, by accumulating worldly power, by accumulating uh, human love, but really, there is a memory of the Father um, who encompasses eight aspects of perfection, divine love, divine power, divine peace, divine joy. These aspects we're striving for because we remember them. When we see the life of Christ, the Buddha, Krishna, the other avatars and masters, we feel in our hearts that that is the reality that we're seeking. Um, I'll tell you one quick story. We went to a movie um, 
in Sacramento, California, many years ago. But a group of us went, and it was a movie about Mother Teresa. And it was just a movie theater. We just paid our movie fee, and we went in and watched a movie. But the movie was a movie about Mother Teresa, a documentary. And so we all sat there, everyone, uh, full house, sold out, and everyone watched the movie. And then the movie was over and the lights went on and everyone in the theater stood up and gave it a standing ovation because everyone recognizes the Christ consciousness. We could recognize it in this movie because Mother Teresa was channeling Christ consciousness from her guru, Jesus Christ, her being a Christian nun. But there was no one in the theater. Mother Teresa wasn't there. None of the sisters of her, of, uh, her order were there. It was just an empty movie theater, but everyone just stood up and gave it a standing ovation because everyone loves the Christ consciousness, only they don't know it as much as they need to. What does it mean to be a disciple of Christ? A disciple of Christ is anyone who is seeking to emulate Christ in any measure. Um, a disciple of Christ by gradations can be um, one of the twelve apostles or Mary, the mother of Christ, or Joseph, or uh, Mary Magdalene, or uh, St. Paul, who was uh, headed to uh, Damascus to kill Christians, <laughs> when, uh, when Jesus knocked him off his horse and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Uh, he became a really good disciple after that. Uh, we don't often merit such uh, direct intervention from the Guru, but the Guru's love, Christ's love, is always offered to us. It's offered to everyone in the world or through other masters. Um, there are stories of Christ appearing to Indian saints, one among them being Ramakrishna, and telling Ramakrishna to help one of Jesus' former disciples to attain liberation in that life. So the guru-discipleship relationship is always there, here, and available. Uh, as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, sons and daughters, uh, and non-binary uh, children of God. Uh, because the, the Christ consciousness is offered and we come to that consciousness through Om, through the creation, preservation, dissolution of this world, we turn our attention to uh, the Christ consciousness. We seek to reclaim it we seek to renew it, we seek to remember it, we seek to come out of the material duality. To seek is to be a disciple. The degree to which we pursue that is the degree of our discipleship at any moment in time. And it is under our complete control. We can always accelerate improve our discipleship. Uh, we can always uh, go to sleep at the wheel. <laughs> we can move backwards. Uh, we can veer off in our discipleship uh, and be um, re-enamored of materialism, of anger, greed, racism, sexism, fill in the blanks, there's all sorts of isms to be aware of and to be watchful for, but discipleship is the movement towards um, the Christ consciousness and, and self-realization. Open your heart to me and I will enter and take charge of your life. Uh, that's the Guru's promise. We 
can at any mo- moment uh, become more like Christ. And the more we actively pursue attunement with that Christ consciousness by study of the scriptures, by opening our hearts to divine love, by giving gifts at Christmas, by Christmas shopping for our friends, by (laughs) singing Christmas carols, by uh, celebrating the winter solstice, by repeating the names of the Buddha. There's no one way to be a disciple of the Christ consciousness. Uh, And that's why there's so many sects of Christianity. That's why there are so many true paths to God. That's why there's so many shamans in the world, because each uh, people, each culture, each time, each nation um, is and has access to uh, the Christ consciousness, to the divine nature. God's chosen people have always been those of every race and nation who with deep love choose him. So it's a question of following and moving towards uh, the Christ consciousness. But the end of discipleship is to be one with the Guru. The end of discipleship is to be a Christ. Um, That's something that mystically uh, the yogis emphasize A lot of sects of Christianity aren't there in their teaching, and that's fine because their job is to get, take people from where they are and move them forward. And directionally, I think everyone in the world could be a better disciple. Uh, But it's for each of us to find our footing, to find our direction for day by day, uh, one day at a time, as the saying goes, is just um, just be more Christ-like, more Mary-like, more Mary Magdalene-like, more John-like, St. John, uh, the Apostle. Uh, the saints are the true custodians of religion. So to tune into the saints, the gurus, the men and women who have exemplified in one way or another, to some extent, um, discipleship to Christ. And that would take us to uh, our leaders, to I, as a young man, was uh, taken by Dr. Martin Luther King's example of Christian living to bring about um, political and social reform. Uh, Gandhi, um, fill in the blanks. Uh, Every country, Nelson Mandela, and all the other men and women who bring us towards Christ consciousness. Christ consciousness being a perfect reflection of the Father's consciousness within this creation we move towards love, joy, brotherhood, acceptance, forgiveness, uh, and a whole list of other Christ-like qualities. In the life of Christ, uh, there's one saying in the Bible at the end, I think it was St. John, if all the things that Jesus did were written down, all the books in the world couldn't um, contain it. So. There's plenty to, to emulate in the life of Christ and the masters and saints of every religion. How can we attune ourselves to Jesus? The life of Christ, the vibration of Christ, the consciousness of Christ is the way, the truth and the life. <laughs> uh, he said that already. Uh, but. It's there for us. We get in 
are modern in all ways, disciples of Christ, churches, ministers, preachers, teach spiritual teachers that present to us their understanding of the life of Christ and the meaning of Christ's teachings. But the filter of individuals' egos, churches, traditions, and politics, and all that are a filter to the pure light of Christ consciousness. So we can use as much of what we are offered through churches and uh, preachers and teachers and uh, to our advantage, but we have to filter it through our hearts and through our experience and through our inner re reaction and understanding, our intuitive understanding of, is this of Christ? Is this of the divine? And Kriyananda used to say often that the saints are the true custodians of religion because they have the experience of the Christ consciousness. And so they're going to share with us some aspects of the Christ consciousness. But different saints come at different times in the needs of man, just as different avatars do. The Buddha came at a time when India needed the Buddha's teachings. Uh, and Christian saints come at different times. Some of them are telling people they've got to shape up and uh, do more penance and this and that. So we can tune into Christ by opening our hearts to Christ and to the vibration of Christ, by learning to meditate on the Christ consciousness, and to attune ourselves to that light and to the vibration of that light and to the expansive uh, nature of that light and that peace and to deepen that experience. And then when we take in teachings or interpretations of scriptures or songs about Christ or stories about Christ or analysis of Christ, to take that into our hearts and feel, does this resonate with my greatest understanding of that light and of the expansive nature of Christ. It is a test that we, we should perform so that we can draw from really all experiences that the Christ consciousness pervades the creation as Om and as the perfect reflection of the Father and we tune into that by deepening our attunement, by seeing it through the eyes of saints. Uh, Yogananda said it's a wonderful practice to every day read about a new saint who, <laughs> who uh, lived in, in times gone by and different aspects that they might give us because eventually we expand our awareness of the Christ to the point where we realize that the Christ consciousness pervades the universe. Christ is omnipresent, all-powerful. Uh, I am with you even to the ends of the earth, is the way Jesus put it. How can I have a spiritual Christmas? I think uh, a spiritual Christmas is a really important goal <laughs> because it would be absolute shame to have a material Christmas and uh, and to miss the real gem that we are offered every December 25th. Also at Easter and 
at the celebration of the avatars of any religion, but Christmas is a, a cultural event. The world celebrates Christmas. We can have a spiritual celebration and really have um, a deep uh, joy to the world and uh, peace on earth to men of goodwill celebration by penetrating into the spiritual dimension of Christmas. I lived in the Ananda Center of Sacramento, and so we were celebrating Christmas, but the entire city was celebrating Christmas with Christmas trees and lights, and so we incorporated that into our celebration by noting the beauty of the Christmas lights and the Christmas trees and the, the Christmas tree Yogananda said is a symbol of the uh, astral spine and the lights on the Christmas tree reflect the um, beauty of the lights of the chakras. Note also that the star is always at the top of the Christmas tree. This is the star of the, of the Christ center, the sixth center chakra. So we, we would incorporate, as we went through the city, that beauty as part of the celebration. You've got to make the best of this because it's going to be all around you if you live in the modern world. Santa Claus giving, uh, rewarding good karma, repelling bad karma. Incorporate the cultural celebration into your spiritual practice, but anchor your celebration of Christmas with an inner practice of meditation, of inner prayer, of chanting or singing the spiritual Christmas hymns. I was raised a Catholic, so I was brought up with all this, the spiritual uh, gifts. Um, we uh, were not a wealthy family, so the spiritual Christmas was the anchor of, of Christmas anyway, because there wasn't much material Christmas to be had, a little, but, but not excessive. A spiritual Christmas, you need to um, drive that, because the world is going to drive a material Christmas, and there's going to be a lot of Santa Claus selling used cars. And that's, that's not quite the same as uh, Mary and Joseph in the inn. I mean, this is, this is a big opportunity. Go about the practice of uh, daily meditation and prayer. Yogananda's book, Metaphysical Meditations, has meditations for Christmas, Christmas morn, Christmas Eve. Uh, incorporate a prayer into your meditation. Um, meditate on the symbolism of the birth of Christ in the simple surroundings of the manger, of the angels bringing the shepherds to the Christ, of the kings coming to the Christ, of the animals uh, being there, Christmas songs, um, the, the, a spiritual Christmas songs, um, maybe lengthen your meditation, uh, coming towards Christmas, uh, ad celebrate Advent, um, the preparation for uh, Christmas, but uh, it doesn't matter what tradition or traditions you establish in your own life, but celebrate a spiritual Christmas by engaging on the spiritual level your life, your consciousness, and build towards Christmas, uh, and then through Christmas, towards New Year, towards um, the um, New Year, new consciousness, and bring that gift of um, Christ's teachings of divine love, joy, peace.
peace. You're going to hear those themes in the public. You're going to hear them from casinos, uh, car dealers, stock exchanges. I got a, um, a Christmas card from my uh, insurance agent. <laughs> and I love it. I mean, it's better than nothing. You know, you, you got to go with, with what's on the table. You'll be able to use the exterior cultural symbolism of Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all traditions if you establish within your own heart and consciousness uh, a increased receptivity to the divine, to divine love, and a inner stillness um, through whatever meditative practices you can use. Be still and know that I am God. Uh, be still and know that Christ is a reflection of the Father.